um, uh, this is this is for uh, Kanjoy, um, although it's really for everyone in the universe. It's all transparent. It's the truth. It's a big subject. I know that I did a video on breeding the female mitochondria a long time ago on a, on, a, on my Rose Sweet channel. Um, and um, this is a very, very delicate subject because you're dealing with all the trauma, all the pedophiles, all the adrenochrome, all the torture to children, all that. This video, this video is not for that. Okay. Uh, but as a polarity integrator, because you're transmuting, you're experiencing all this stuff. Okay. I am very in tune because it's a resist, because it's what it is. It's a resistance game. They resist us. We resist them. We're more expanding. The resistance that we actually experience is the resistance in them, not us. They resist us because they live in fear of who we are. That's why they want to drive the the other direction to go solid state. Okay, w which means you have no idea the sheer terror they go through when they realize that much purified light is present in their space. Okay, that means it's over for them. They're gone. It's like return to source, return to fire. It's what happens. It's the, it's the way it works. So they fear that. That's like the worst that could happen. Because it means they can't body jump no more. It means they can't play their games anymore. They can't use their technology anymore. The games are over. Which is the same thing as to say the source from which all love creates anything. Is here. That's maximum output or maximum input or maximum fire that can be brought to bear to burn off a virus. Because that's what it is. So I mentioned that to, to cite a reference on the portal, Blogspot, because somebody posted that. I was led, hey, go look at this. And then it's, and then in other words, I'm not scrolling through a hundred messages. It's like, I got to go through them in order to find the one that I'm looking for. And I found it. And then I acknowledged that I found it and looked at the sun and said, they got the speed memo, mama. Okay. That's how it works. You're in a communication system, right? So you know what we know. Now they know it. Now they post it. Go read it. See if you can find it. <laughs> I mentioned it in, the, in a video yesterday, but but to Kunjoy's heart, um, she asked me um, about my my son. Okay, um, and so when it comes to sex and what have you, I'll, I'll start off by simply saying that when I was a young teenager, around twelve or thirteen, I had serious discussions because you know that you're on a spiritual battlefield for all the marvel because this is going for your soul and the essence of your spirit. So would you ever, as a mother or father, want to endanger another soul or another spirit like your children? And have them be born into this realm to be born into that, where your children get kidnapped, gone, put in a cage, sold on the traffic market, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Would you do that, knowing that? I had serious issues with that when I was a teenager, that it was like, I'm not, I'm not going to bear fruit, Right? But being androgynous and, and having uh, just, I had an enormous amount of sex drive. When you're a hyperdrive, you're naturally wanting to spread seed everywhere because of what the realm that you know that you're in. So if you thought of this as a breeding practice and you have demons that are breeding with others that are going to go one way, right? Increase the density and the compression, if you will. And then you have the other end of things, which is RH positive, which is pure blood, that wants to increase it going in the other direction. So now you can begin to see how the breeding populations and how they were controlling the populations because they can map that. 
It's no different than mapping a, a, a species of lizards to see what the reproductive rate is going to be through predictive programming. It's no different. But when a spiritual being is on fire because they're experiencing eternal love through their heart, running a hyperdrive, then you can imagine the seed that comes out of somebody like that and the speed at which the production of that is going to produce a thriving community. Because the software that is like a, a real high version of that, because that's the imprint, that's the DNA imprint you leave when you come in here. That's your record. I left my imprint in the DNA. Okay. As a polarity integrator. Everything that I experienced here. Okay. And and so therefore, now that becomes essentially what they can map. And go, wow, look what he was able to do with the software. Navigating through a vampiric energy zone. Managed to be able to come out of it in the way that he did. So that leaves a record. So you're like, you're a student and a teacher at the same time. So in other words, as I was explaining to her, I think of it as like a lab. You've, most everybody's had a lab class. So the female mitochondria lab is like a database of basically code transfers, right? Now you get into code swarming, gene code swarming. So in other words, when she's been seated, even if she hasn't been pregnant, okay, that's an upload. An upload. Information that is represented data transfer, code transfer between one being and another. Because now the energies are with each other, particularly in the most intimate way that they possibly can. So when a male has deposited seed, that's like a seed deposit, which is a, a vision. It's no different than sending an email packet. Okay. In, into somebody's inbox. Okay. Or a Trojan horse that comes in to a goddess's planet. And now it releases itself inside of a planet, changes the grid around in order to suit itself as different species that come in here that are alien to the grid that was here. And then look what they did to it. That's all based on codes, seated races that want to change the grid in order to support what it is that they are. All right. So that's what they do. So in a very real sense, the girl's lab that now has access to all that data, all that visual information codes that is going to produce a software operating system in which a soul connected with the spirit comes in through her, the portal, and then comes out, right? Okay? So in other words, a female is supposed to know should, right? And same thing with a male, but to breed with. In this case, what we're talking about is spiritual growth and development. As I mentioned to her, don't you think it would be intelligent to hang out with a, an engine, a very powerful engine of creation that is a beautiful musician and experience the essence of their spirit, to know that they are experiencing what love is, they're, peace, they're peaceful, they're harmonious beings. In other words, they're beautiful to be with because their energy is powerful because the essence of their spirit, wow, what a beautiful being to be with. Okay, so what you're doing is you're making a measurement of their learning, which is their evolution of where they are, which is the use of their energy. What are they doing with their energy? So if you're with somebody who's very powerful, has a powerful engine, which means they're running powerful energy because they have so much love in their heart, wouldn't that seem to be the kind of being you, you want to hang out with? Because chances are you got a future with a guy like that and vice versa. Right? Wants to hang out with a powerful girl. Right? How intelligent is she? How creative is she? The power of the energy is the power of the spirit. And the power of the spirit is based on the learning because the spirit is the teacher that is guiding the soul. Right? So you can see, because I remember this, because I know this, that women were um, sadly um, killing their newborns as a result of realizing that they had been breeded by a demon. Okay? Because there's all kinds of ways in which that obviously occurs. Particularly when you're in a, in a massive trauma zone. <laughs> because I've seen it in so many different places. The horror and the tragedy that occurs in both women and men's lives as a result of all that. And of course, you already know what they did. They made that. They made murder legal. We're going to traumatize the hell out of you. Flood your minds with drugs because we know that you need an escape hatch. And at the same time, we're going to make it so that you can go ahead and murder a child because that's what's going to result from the way that this place works because you're in a vampiric energy zone. 
Now, see, when I was growing up as a child, it was very rare to, 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 to see children that had parents where the parents divorced. Okay. I, I didn't, when I grew up in Southern California and, and all the communities I grew up in, it was, it was very rare to hear about children that all of a sudden found out that were friends of mine, that their parents were going to divorce and be separated. Even my own mother and my father. Okay. I came in through my mother's portal at a very precise time that I knew I was coming in because I picked my parents. Okay. And so it happened one night in a hotel room as a result of my mother meeting my father at a Navy ball because my dad was a Navy fighter pilot after World War II. That was my entry point. So I already covered why I chose my particular parents, but the fact of the matter is, is that they were not married. My mother was married to a man who was a ship captain for the Canard Lines, as I remember it, because her adopted father was uh, Charlie Waters, who was business partners with Simpson, Spence, and Young, and Wallace Simpson was the uh, <laughs> the bride of King Edward. See, so out of that, my parents decided that they were going to get married on my behalf because of what happened. Until I was old enough to what when my father believed that you were able to make decisions on your own, which means you don't need any more supervision. You've learned enough to be able, you're off and running. You're on your own. And then when that happened, I was 14 years of age and my dad, my mother and father separated. But what happened to me to explain it to her is that I married a girl and I've mentioned this before. It's funny how the number seven minus seven, you know, you think seven years minus seven took seven plus years going forward with me because I'm positive electrons. She separates from me because it's all about money. And, and that came about as a result of her mother, who also experienced trauma, because she was a radio grant operator in Hungary, known as a gypsy, okay? So I knew her mother very well. I used to sit down with her and she explained to me how she lived in a, in a tenant apartment with 12 other families. They shared one shower, one toilet, where she was always having to replace her shoes with cardboard out of the same factory that if she ever got caught doing it, she could be in hot water. Well, she was working 12, 16 hours a day for the Soviets in Hungary when, you know, after World War II. So in other words, this is where we get into the scarcity of things. Now they're into chasing electrons because the more shit that they have, the more shit that they believe that is valuable. So if they never run out of that, which is the material side of the universe, which is the matter side, okay, means that I'll always have money, a source of money as a result of what happened to her, which was traumatized. So what do you think she did? Her daughter mimics her mother's same behavior. And her mother's going to make sure that she's programmed to do that. So now you have her mother who's chasing electrons. Now that she's got her daughter chasing electrons. So you know with somebody who's giving electrons, she's going to feed off me. So what do you think happened? Seven years into that marriage, I'm working in the fire department only to find out that when I come home, she's upstairs with some other dude. Why? More money. That's how it works. So she wants to hang out with another vampire, another parasite. So what do you think happened? So I haven't. So what ends up happening out of that, between what happened at Rockwell, and then and then ending up, what she did is she goes, "You're not going to see my son anymore because when I came home and found him, okay, in 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 a place that." All my money that I'm making as a firefighter is going into this place for her, me, and, and my son, who was three years old, right? So she hopped on board his wagon and took my kid with her. And then they decided to say, I'm going eastbound. Didn't even bother telling me where. And, and, and from that point on, the amount of trauma that I felt as a result of that, because I'm a spiritual teacher, OK, that's not what she is. She's in the material side of things. So you can imagine how much pain that that's a deep wound. OK, that is a very deep wound. Uh, because of the bloodline that I represent, which is Arcturian. And I'm not the only one that has had this happen. It's happened. My clan mother, Karen Ann Luke McDonald. And it happened with uh, Chris Nadeau, who was the his father was a weatherman with Admiral Byrd. Same thing. 
So it's not secret that these intersections happen the way that they do. And then all of a sudden I find out my son's gone. And they come up with all kinds of, it's sort of like saying, yes, I will love you until death do us part. Uh, but when the shit hits the fan and I realize I can get more money, that shit doesn't matter anymore because money is more important than that contract or that agreement. Because money is more important to them than honor. That's the truth of it. They don't know the first thing about what love is because they don't experience it. Okay. They're running on the mental field, which is the AI field. Okay. So that, that's a whole nother story. So in, in the process, as I explained to her, I managed to be able to get three girls pregnant all at the same time who didn't know each other uh, because of, of, of how those relationships all sort of came together at the time in which they did in which that occurred. It's known as the law of attraction, which is called a spiritual attraction, which means the rules go out the window. Remember rule-based functions? And all the programming, okay? Everything is all about programming. Everything is about you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do this, you can't do that. And now that goes into your memory and that's what you follow. That's your future proof path. Which means none, none of what they do is natural. It's all programming. See, if your natural biology was intended to be able to get pregnant 12 years of age, right? Because that's, what you're, that's the natural way in which you were born to be able to do that. All you have to do is go back to the 1850s and find out that there were men and women at age 12 years of age that were getting married and building a cabin and growing a farm. Okay? Which means they had reached a level of maturity on a spiritual and intelligent level, okay, that nature, they were following, if you will, they were responding to the way in which nature works because it's natural. So instead, it became non-natural. Because now it's all about programming. Controlling the population production. No, they can't have children until they're 15, 16 years of age. They're not even going to be an adult until they're 18. It's all programming. Every single last bit of it is all programming. So you got to cut through all that BS. Because I'll just tell you the truth. I met a beautiful spirit because it's a spirit, which is the energy with another spirit, which is energy that are attracted to each other because those are magnets. So the first girl that I remember that I ever had any kind of sexual intercourse with was when I was nine years of age. She was nine. She was nine. Take that back. She was a year older than me. I was in fourth grade. She was in fifth grade. We were close friends. She loved. She was a dreamboat. It's spirit to spirit, soul to soul. So it's natural. It's like, I don't need a guidebook. I have somebody else tell me. Nature does not need a guidebook to say, this is when it's, you're ready. Nature lets you know. Because it's the nature of your spirit. When it's the nature of your spirit, it's with the nature of another spirit. And those two spirits, which represent energy, want to be together in that way, which is the most intimate contact, they will. Because that's what comes natural. That's what spirits do. When two spirits are experiencing what love is, which is the light that they represent in their heart and their soul, they're going to come together in the way that they can develop the most intimate bonding relationship. And nothing will bond two spirits and two souls than having the most intimate contact with each other in energy. Because that's when the fire is really lit. That's how it works between spirit and spirit, fire and fire. Now the fire is lit. They don't want you to feel that. Okay? Okay. That's where the resistance game come in. Because all the people that resist what I just got done saying is because of all the programming they haven't cut loose out of the ramp. Okay? So you got to burn all that off. So now we're talking about the purest of energy, which is the purest of love, where you don't experience any of that. Which essentially means the programming doesn't exist. It's trying to control what you experience. Now you're pure spirit, which is pure in that light. That's a whole different ballgame. That's the spirit of fire that created a universe. It starts with spirit and fire. How much fire you got in you to create a universe with? And if there's, a, if there's a god in you as a male, then you want to find a goddess to go do it with and join forces and become one. Now you become one. 
That's what I am. That means we're not afraid to tell you the truth about how creation has an orgasm to create a universe. So you need a girl to do it with. 